Hello, Mark. This is Dimitris from Metal Chaos in Chicago. How are things in Australia? Uh, good, mate. Uh, winter at the moment, so a little cold and miserable down here in Melbourne, but uh, doing doing good. You know what? I was thinking about that. Sometimes um, we tend to forget Australia and New Zealand for that matter. And we talk about the summer season and the festival season and you guys have winter. Not only yes. that, though, not only that, you have great bands there. There's many bands coming out of Australia now that are, I think, finally um, starting to to make their mark in the metal world. So, right. yeah, yes. yeah, we do. We do get uh, historically overlooked. But, uh, you know, I think that, you know, we are bringing some cool stuff to the table these days. Yes, but we need uh, I mean, the, the the fans need to do a better job and pay attention to what's happening in the entire entire planet. It, it's not only the North uh, hemisphere. Yes, exactly. Honestly, I was thinking about apologizing for that, but I'm not everyone. So, but anyways, I felt a little <laughs> bad about it. With that being said, um, the lineup now is spread, not spread, is uh, between two hemispheres now. <laughs> so yes, how, so how it's, it's unique. Um, yeah, I guess we have two Finnish guys in the band and we have two Australian guys in the band. And I don't know if there's any other bands that have that combination. I think I think it's pretty I unique. So, <laughs> um, and yeah, I guess it's been this is our first album with this lineup. Um, Richie, the guitar player, has been in the band for I think it must be eight years now. Um, me and him, uh, he's been with us since the last record. I've been in the band since the beginning, twenty one years ago, um, and. Jan's been in the band for over four years now, and Nicholas over two and a half, three years. So um, it's very unique, and um, I guess it it came during COVID time. So it was a really great thing to come out of COVID, and I think it followed on from our we toured with Amorphous um, previously um, in two thousand and thirteen. We did an Australian tour with Amorphous, so we befriended. Um, Nicholas first and then Jan. And so when we toured in 2019 with the Australian lineup, the last Australian <laughs> lineup of this band, um, the you know, the first person that contacted me was Jan. He's like, hey man, come come down to the studio. And I thought that you know, really down to earth. I love that. So so uh, and Nicholas came down as well. So um we were all the Aussie Eternal guys were all we're all hanging out um, you know, with Jan and Nicholas and it just so happened when we got back from that tour that we lost our drummer um, and um, COVID was about to start. And I, and we just, me and Richie just had this crazy idea of, you know, why are we li limiting ourselves to what's in front of us? Why can't we have an international drummer? And we, we offered to hire Jan to play on the record and he was really happy to do so. And because uh, uh, he wasn't touring lockdowns were beginning mm -hmm. and but it very quickly became a strong friendship and strong collaboration and i think it was a matter of months and yam was like oh, i'm joining this band you know so so that was really cool and then our australian bass player had his second child and he needed to focus on his family he'd been in the band for more than uh more than 10 years so it was it was very hard and um but we needed a bass player and our little thing went off and said, let's get Nick, man. Let's get Nicholas because why not have two fins if we've got one, you know? We, so, and Nicholas was like so, sort of the same thing, came in to do the record, but then he just, he joined as well. And then, uh, then we made the record. So basically both of them uh, were added, added themselves to the lineup. It was not. <laughs> well, it was, it was definitely like, I wanted I Nicholas to join but you know of course of course i like guess you know it's a unique situation like how are we going to make it work you know how are we going to make it work outside of the studio so um and of course at that point you know we, we'd made a record but we didn't have a record deal and um we sort of did we sort of had a relationship with a smaller label that we could work with but you know Jan had bigger ideas for things and, you know, so we spent a year like shopping, you know, shopping around and negotiating and, and we, we ended up going with, um, with RPM 
and and it's it's been really great so far. So wait a minute, you had the album ready for a year and then you were shopping around? We were sh we we started shopping around when we finished the record Whoa. in uh in so we we hadn't decided how we were going to release it yet. So the album has has been finished for a while. Um, we, we initially finished, we flew to Helsinki after the lockdowns, me and Richie, and we mixed the album together, um, mm. in Helsinki, the four of us. And, you know, that was a really great collaborative experience. Then we had this finished record and we were like, are we going to do it ourselves? Are we going to go back to the old label we were with, or are we going to try for something new? And that, you know, once we, we had a few labels interested, but, you know, once we started serious negotiations with, with RPM, um, they were going through some changes because um, they were previously Atomic Fire. So we had, there was a whole period that took a long period of time there. But we wrote a lot of new songs in that period. So I was about to ask because since you had all this time basically not waiting, but not doing anything in the studio. So you have already started for the... Uh, we've got 13 new songs we've got 13 new songs and we've already recorded drums for the next record so oh, we're doing the next album now so okay there is a lot to unpack right now uh <laughs> first of all you said uh you uh, flew to uh helsinki to do the mixing yes that must be had to be new for you right because you were working in the band in your own studio or in the studio in australia but now yeah. you're on the other hemisphere. Was it strange well, for you? I'd, be, I'd been going to Finland for many years. Like oh. the Eternal's first record deal was with Firebox Records in Finland and then Inverse Records in Finland. So I'd already been to Finland 10 times. Like I, 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 really connected I was talking about the, the studio culture. itself. New equipment. Yeah, that was a new experience. Like I wasn't mixing. I wasn't mixing in my space, you know, yeah. my room. And um, it was challenging. It was definitely sonically challenging for me and Richie. We didn't know the room very well. We're all sound engineers. Uh, everyone in the band has a sort of sound thing going on. And we all have recording studios. So, yeah, you get comfortable in your own room. But also the challenge is good, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, it, 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 it it's almost just... Even the like when we signed, I was actually back in Helsinki. So, so we signed it face to face with the with the record label as well. We were we were back over there working on the next record. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 unique, man. But it's super super cool. Like you know, we've got really good friendship and good relationship um, going on, and um, I really feel at home there. So I really like like being there and and now i'm very comfortable with the studio i've been there you know a few times now so so why did you pick the name skinwalker because skinwalker my mind goes to the native american folklore but i'm sure yes and going through the lyrics there is uh, more to that correct <laughs> <laughs> um i it, it's it planted a seed uh in me i i remember Around 2019, I was starting to write material. We were about to go on tour. I was starting to write material for the... Actually, I'd written a few songs in 2019 for the record, but I'd, I'd watched a few documentaries on this skinwalker phenomenon and and how, you know, a, something would present itself to you and it wasn't exactly as it appeared. That hit the seed for me. And so I used it. Um, hopefully not disrespectfully to, to the American Indian people, but I, I used it as a metaphor for like us in our everyday life of, um, of dealing with people that appear in your life differently than they really are to kind of charm you, bring you into their life, I guess, narcissistic personalities, mm -hmm. um, and, and then drain all your energy and spit you out. So that's the kind of metaphor so i thought the skinwalker was really kind of a dark cool um you know way to instead of just calling the record narcissist <laughs> yeah and i there is no i don't think anyone will feel that you are being disrespectful in fact you are drawing from folklore because i think that sometimes folklore is wiser than 
all the wiser things that we know, if you know what I'm saying. So yes. they're using yes. this creature and actually talk about these people who are actually more fearsome than the actual skinwalker. Yeah. I mean, I think all of us, you know, have had people in our in our lives that we've opened up to and that we've let in and mm-hmm. and then they just destroy us. You know, I think we've all been through that and I'm no exception. I've, yeah. I've I went through a lot of things in the last six years, you know, in, the, in between records and, and, um, you know, and so it became, you know, I didn't expect that we were going to call the album Skinwalker, but that, that theme, those lyrics, that theme of, of loss of, of, um, of, you know, also isolation. I think it's all blended in with kind of that, and the isolation we faced in the Australian lockdowns because we were locked down for, you know, almost like 300 days or something ridiculous. And um, I was by myself primarily through that period going through some big changes in my life. And um, so that whole theme carries through the whole record. So Skinwalker just seemed to be a nice kind of uh, mantle to put everything else under. But I didn't, I wasn't trying to write a concept record, but... It's a very cathartic lyrically and kind of very consistent. Uh, all, our lyrics have always been um, introspective and and from a, an emotional inner emotional standpoint. But I I think this one seems to be really poignant. I think people yeah. seem to be picking up on it. Like I think people are like these lyrics mean something, and there's a whole theme going on here. It seems to be what's coming back to me. So, I you know as the lyricist, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm you know. I'm vulnerable because I'm talking about my feelings and right. um but I'm hoping that others can relate and that it, that it, it show that it, it it impacts them in some way. Yeah, it requires a lot of courage to expose yourself like this through your music and especially through the lyrics so it's something we we appreciate. Um Thank you. for that particular song you have a guest, right? Yes. So now he's go on. There's guests all over, but continue your question. But since we are talking about the the actual song, I thought to 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 ask, how did you come up with the idea? Well, let's use this uh, throat singer. Um, Albert, well, I'm not gonna try to pronounce his last name. <laughs> you should help me, Albert. Albert, I, I'm not even sure if I can. Pro- like Australians are not great at pronouncing. <laughs> I'm Greek, man. I'm Greek, so my my accent is terrible. <laughs> Um, but Albert, uh, if you have ever heard the song "The Bee" by Amorphous, yes, Albert is on there. Ooh, oh, I see the connection now. So Jan was like, "This was Jan's idea." It was like we had this thing going, and um, this kind of droney type song, and Jan was like, "We should put." I know this throat singer. He sung with Amorphous. And he's so cool. So he contacted him and we sent him the song and, and that came back. <laughs> it's yes. a phenomenal sound, right? So Jan really is great at networking and bringing back these kind of world music elements. He's the son of a composer and he's very much a composer himself. And he really is into like world music and textures and percussion and so he just brings more than just drumming into the into the occasion so he brought albert in and um well we sent the song to albert and albert you know and then also we blended a russian singer emily sayan all right um and so her voice is in there as well contributing to that drone she sings on a lot of the backing vocals on the record but so you've got if you listen to Skinwalker, there's this deep male drone which also goes into these really high, crazy sonic things that most humans can't do. And then there's Emily kind of adding a sweetness to that. Um, it's it's epic. <laughs> I have to do this terrible song, uh, this terrible joke. Uh, this song gets under your crawls under your skin, right? <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> Look, I think it's like kind of a bold move for us to release that as one of the singles because it's pretty dark and brooding. And um, I'm not sure that everyone is going to like understand that song immediately. It really is about the drone, the darkness, yep. the lyrics. It really is about the, about, you know, someone coming into your life and, 
you know, breeding their hate and sickness in you? You know what? Um, the eternal record, the Skinwalker record, is one of those records, and this is why uh, one of the reasons why I like that, why I like this record, is you really need to invest uh, time to listen. It's not like you will listen a couple of songs just for a couple of minutes and you're done. You have to dive into, go through the lyrics, see what's going on. And that's... We're very much, yeah, we're very much about making records. Like, we're not about making songs. Like, mm -hmm. we make songs, but but it's all about the... the right. Like, we're old school, man. We're all older guys. We're about making... We're, we're not looking for a quick hit single... I, I guess record labels would like that, but we're really about like making like a whole statement. So I think, I I think if you've heard the singles, um, it's not completely representative of how the album works, you know, because there's a lot of textual density. There's a lot of ups and downs. There's proggy stuff. There's some really long songs, but it all kind of pieces together as as a bigger puzzle. Um, so you have to invest time into the eternal if you're someone that wants a quick fix and a blast beat and a growl you know we're not the we're not the guys for you but if, if you want to sit down and you know smoke a joint or have a glass of wine or, or and listen to a record and read the lyrics then we're the guys for you yep and you, i'm guessing although you are doing growls in uh nephirium right in the other band that's i'm not oh uh, yeah that was kind of a fun side project thing but for this time, for this record, did Tommy from Amorphis did uh, growlings? Indeed, he did. That is Tommy doing all the growling. He initially came in to do one song, and um, I was like, "Jan, Tommy is the best growler in the freaking world. Please <laughs> ask him to do this. There's not heaps of growling on the record, and and it's not really something we're moving forward with as far as as far as the sound." Um, but I'm yes, I, I growled in Nefarium, but that was really a studio thing. I can't really maintain that in a live situation very well. It's not my strength. My strength is melodic vocals. Okay. Um, so Tommy agreed, and he did it all, and 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 he's the best at it, in my opinion. I don't think anyone growls like Tommy J does, man. And it's an honor to have, you know, him growling on the record. Um, and it's only in three songs. We only got like little textures. It's just to enhance um, things. But yeah, that's Tommy. And then we have Santeri from Amorphous playing keys on Under the Black, just some Hammond. We're in the studio and we just wanted this Hammond. And and Yana's like, oh, I'll just message Santeri. And then he sent it back like an hour later. Like it was it was great. And then uh, and then somehow we end up with Sammy from Creator playing the sitar. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah. So Sammy is a, a guitarist. So I, I was trying to to put my my uh, to put your myself to your shoes, and I said I have Sammy doing some guest appearances. Okay, let's have him play sitar. It doesn't doesn't compute, <laughs> man. You have to help uh, me out. You know that Jan has something to do with that shit, man. Like Jan <laughs> and Nicholas knew that he can like he's Finnish, right? Even though creator's yeah. German. Um, but Jan knew he could play the sitar. I don't know why he knew that, but he knew. And Sammy was in the studio doing something else. And Jan was like, hey, man, we got a sitar over here. Can you play sitar on Temptation's Door? Which was initially part of the Iconoclast. It still is. But, uh, and Sammy was like, yeah, man, cool. So next thing I know, Jan's like, yeah, Sammy from Creator is playing the sitar. So I was like, <laughs> to me, it's it's the same, man. I'm just like, what the hell? Like. But, uh, you know, it's cool. It gets a different outlet. It gets to try something different. I'll definitely have him do it again. It sounds very, very cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, there's um, there's a few people involved in the in the um, guest realm, I guess. Have I, Primarily, have I, it's the four of us. Have I missed anyone? Because we mentioned Tommy, Sandary, uh, Emily, Sammy, uh, Albert. I'm trying to go... Uh, I'll have to have it. Let me think here for a second, man. Cause uh, uh, yes. Um, yes, there is more people. <laughs> um, we have uh cello by, by Alian. Um, uh, and I'll send you her name. If you, is this a print interview? Is this a no, uh, video? 
Oh, I will make us look. Uh, uh, I will make you because I will not show my face. I will make you look awkward because you cannot uh, pronounce the last names, man. <laughs> I'm putting man. You on the, I'm putting you on the spot right there. I wish I had known this was a video interview. Um, I can't say European last names, man. Um, you but are, we we uh, have. Okay, so we have um, we have Alien from uh, Celestial Season. Mm -hmm. She's playing um, cello on uh when the fire dies okay um so there's some cello there and i think that's all the actual physical guests um yanni who was the previous keyboard player from swallow the sun he has contributed to songwriting on um death like silence we wrote the vocal melodies he helped with the vocal melodies and contributed to that to that one. That was the first time we'd ever had an external vocal producer. So, uh, and he's fantastic. Now, if anyone of my friends from Europe sees this and I don't say their last names properly, please forgive me. The Australian accent is a pain in the ass. Yeah, ah, speaking operative word. Man, are you, you're talking to a Greek man who, has, who is trying to speak English. We are good. Don't don't worry about these things. We are saying a lot of good stuff. Don't worry. Uh, I mean, no disrespect to anyone's awesome last names. Jan is super good at the last names. Okay. We will uh, include you. <laughs> no. So uh, I wanted to, uh, the optics from, uh, the optics of the music videos, Death Like Silence, uh, it's grim. It's almost uh, not black and white. It's gray. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have when the fire dies. So two opposites. Very bright. Yeah, right. uh, same same video producer, um, Red Tape Pictures in uh, Queensland, Australia. Um, I think he was, uh, like, he really knocked it out of the park with the last one. I was really blown away with Death Like Silence um, because he he's old school, man. He, he doesn't use any AI or anything. That's all actors, makeup. He he basically turns his garage into a movie set every single time, and uh, he he makes it old school. He edits it, he shoots it, he gets all the actors, the makeup artists, like everything you see in that video is a real human, and I think that's really really cool. And the same with the last one, like I think Jan came to me, he was like, "Man, there's some AI people in that last video." And I'm like, "No, man, it's not what Clint does. They're it's real people." In you know so um and and he was under a lot of pressure with um when the fire dies and I think he blew it out out of the water man because we had little time he had to do that in about four four to five weeks wow. um it's crazy um because the label wanted that single out and um we were running out of time and so I don't know how he just pulled that out of nothing but um yeah they're quite different um. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I think, I think maybe because it's fresh, but I really love the When the Fire Dies video. I think it's really beautiful. Oh, yeah. I love, I love Death Like, but I've seen it so many times now, I think. Uh, Death Like Silence is a really beautiful, dark music video. But, um, <clears throat> you know, they're both very cinematic, you know, and then they're both very much Clint style. So I recommend Red Tape Pictures uh, and, you know, obviously – uh, working with international <clears throat> lineup, we have to like shoot footage and do green screen stuff and whatever else. But uh, um, I think, yeah, he knocks it out of the park, Clint. Uh, have you filmed another music video or those are the two, just the two? Um, we've got a lyric video for Under the Black coming out next week, I found out, um, which I made. So I'm I'm a sound engineer, but previously, my previous career in another life was I was a graphic designer. So, um, I did the album cover, um, and I, I still dabble, but I've done the new lyric video as well. I've actually done a, a new lyric video for Octoploid as well, which is mm. coming out. Soon. Great. So, I, so I guess I'm doing a bit of graphics and video again as well, but, uh, I um, miss that you were involved in Octoploid, another great, uh, new album. Yeah. I, I wasn't on the record, but, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, worked on a lyric video for the band. So, awesome. um, so, you know, it's all connected, man, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So that'll be it, uh, for the moment, the two lyric videos and the two music videos, and then the album's out and, uh, 
then we're going to keep working on a new one and hopefully hopefully get on tour as well. Before going to that question, I want to ask you about the cover artwork. And I like that you did that because you can speak to that. I was trying, I was raking my mind, where have I seen this symbol? But I was, I failed. I haven't found any reference. So is this something, I don't know, <laughs> help me out. What is I this? I just created that symbol out of okay. my head. Okay. So um, <laughs> this, like as a graphic designer in my previous life, well, I can't say it's my previous life because I'm still doing it, I guess. The, the labels kind of brought it back out of me because they keep getting me to do graphics. And now I've sort of, we actually had Travis Smith do the cover first, but uh, it didn't it look too uh, like death metal. So I guess the label was like, can, can we do something that encapsulates the sound a bit more? So I guess that symbol, I don't know, man. It's just like, I'm very into geometric shapes and kind of graphic looking stuff. Um, that's more my style of graphic design. And so I just started messing with triangles and, and circles, man. And, uh, and it kind of just built it all up. And then it just looked very iconic and very cool yeah. and very prog. So I was like, you know, that's cool, man. So, so it kind of was there. I had that done. And even when Trav did his artwork, I put it in there. I was like, can you put this thing in there? Right. And, um, You'll see Travis's artwork on the Skinwalker single. That's where that ended up. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 I guess I was just influenced by geometric art. Not oh. really, like it's not really, um, but it's kind of become sort of like a logo for us. You know, I, could, I, 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 I sort of use it in different elements of visuals that we're doing. I think it's kind of quite strong. Um, but there's no magical, mystical reason for, for why, why it appeared. I just created it out of my... You spoiled all the magic anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a mic stand with that. That will, be, that will look awesome. I would love it on a guitar or something as well. It would look very, very super cool. Um, so, Skinwalker is coming out almost 20 years after the somber light of isolation, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know what. Wow, <laughs> I don't know what what month uh, the somber light of isolation came I out. I have um, May thirty first. Okay, so yeah, May June. So it's it's, it's twenty years, man. Twenty years since the first album came out. <laughs> so yeah, and I've been in the eternal for twenty one years. So it's a long time. Oh, um, but this is, uh, I guess you know, um, it's really. It's it seems like you know we're kind of on a bigger label for the first time, and I guess like it doesn't always happen for you on your first record. You just got to stick at what you're doing, and 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 who knows how well this is going to go. But you know it, it's great to have more people behind this one. Um, I've got a soft spot for that first record. You know it was it was it was my dream, and and you know I made it made it happen, um, and. Um, yeah, it's kind of a nice bookend there. I guess we have this twenty years later, and the and the seventh the seventh album is coming out now. Other bands have made more albums in their twenty year lifespan, but um, or less. you know, being that I I ran the show for so long by myself, um, and have gone through you know, and I've always had a day job and another career and all those type of things. You know, it it's it's you know it's quite the body of work, and uh, number eight is on the way, so it's it's. It, Quick question. Are there plans to re-release uh, the older stuff now that you are with RBM? Um, I don't know. I guess we're going to have to see, you know, if they're interested in, in doing any vinyls or anything for older records. Of course, we would be interested. I have considered remixing some of the older records myself because I didn't record and mix the early records, mm -hmm. the first two I start. I I contributed to recording on the third record, um, but um, you know I feel like I'd love to go back and I've I've actually been thinking about doing Somber Light, um, splitting it out with some stems and kind of tweaking the mix a bit, um, and just giving it a bit of a you know a bit more of a the sound that I would have liked it to have. But um, you know. If if the label is interested in in any older stuff, yeah, I was sort of torn. If I do this Sombre Light remix, 
it's going to interfere with this record. True. Or the next. You know, if I do it, yeah, if I do it at a 20-year period, you know, I, I sort of need to let this record take the lead. Right. And, you know, maybe, you know, start revisiting. I'd really like to fix the fourth record. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Under a New Sun. I think that really needs a new mix. So, so yeah, there is a chance that I will go through and remix some of the older stuff. We'd even jokingly said about selecting like 10 songs from all those records and re-recording them with this lineup as well. So there's, there's some ideas to kind of, um, you know, work on, on, on not like, you know, not forgetting. I, I've got to give the guys credit for that, that they... Richie's been in the band for eight years, Jan for about four, Nicholas for about three, and they respect my history with the band and they're very supportive of my legacy um, and and my journey. And 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 it's our journey now, but I, I just I'm really humbled that they they support and respect that I put my life into this band. And um and I'm glad they're on the journey with me now. And and any and if any opportunity to you know, bring out some older stuff if people are interested. Yeah, we will do it. Now that you said journey, I will go to tours now. What are the plans for touring? <laughs> so it's early stages um, planning those ideas and a, a few things and opportunities have popped up that I really wanted to say yes to that we're not quite ready for yet um, financially and, and um, logistically. Um so I think I think I get the feeling we're gonna start with Finland. I, I get the feeling. Makes sense. Like, you know, kind of test the waters with this lineup. And uh probably I'm trying to think about Australia as well. Now obviously our drummer is in a touring band, he's in Amorphous. So, you know, that takes time and we have to plan our tours in in the down period. Because I don't really want to go out without Jan. Like he's he's a partner in this, you know. So so I feel like early in the year, there's going to be a tour. Okay. It's not going to be next week. We have to work on it. We have to get together and rehearse and we have to put a show together where we're, we're going to put a lot of effort into it. Um, but I think I get the feeling we're going to start on home soil, so to speak, for um, for Finland and, and Australia and probably hopefully branch out to Europe and hopefully um Festivals, um, we're really looking at finding a proper new booking agent and things like that as well. So we've got a lot of business things to work out now that we're in a business together across the world. It's not that easy starting a business across the world. No, so a lot of logistics to work out, but we will get there. You will see us on a stage. Well, you can have, you can tour with Amorphis. I'm yes. not sure if the uh, the guys will agree to double duty mm -hmm. every night, but hey, Jan Jan will double duty. Um, but there's you know there's there's things at play there as well, and we 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 don't necessarily want to ride on the on the coattails of Amorphous. I know we have a lot of guests from Amorphous True. on the record, um, but that's more out of like they're people we know, and we wanted good musicians to do certain things, you know. Um, I'd love to tour with Amorphous again, but I will never use um, our connection to... to. I, I want the Eternal to stand alone as well. And I know Jan does as well. Like, this is a, a different expression for him. This is really something that he's able to contribute more to as a composer. And uh, and, and it's 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 a big expression for him too so i know we want to stand on our own feet as yes. well but you know if there's a chance to play with amorphous of course we you know i grew up on that band and you know i love the band and i would i would love to tour with them but um at the same time you know we we don't want the eternal to be amorphous junior or something because true true well uh, my question stemmed from my personal interest because you know amorphous come to the uh, to the u.s often and i was thinking well yeah. you can squeeze two more people there or yeah 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 you know well nicholas isn't in amorphous anymore so you know they've got they've got true they've got true. Uh, ollie pecker uh back but um um but you know it 
it it would be cool. I think you know they know Nicholas for a long time, and it would just be the other two of us if we could. I would, the Eternals been to America before. We 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 toured with Taria um, from Nightwish. Right, we toured back. I don't know. That was like, oh, that was a while ago. It was mm. two thousand and nine. Um, and I actually toured as a guitarist for Virgin Black uh, in America as well. So I've been to America a couple of times, and Canada and Mexico, and I would love. I would love to come back and play in America. That would be a really cool experience. It's been mostly Europe, a lot of Europe, Japan, um, and and America. Some some little tastes of what it's like over there, you know. So you see, so hopefully, I did a mistake. I mean, uh, I was thinking I, I had connected Nicholas with Amorphis, but he has not been in the band for the last seven years. So you see, yeah, mistakes, yeah. man. Come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I mean, he's uh, he's got his own thing going on with Flat Earth. Correct. And um, you know, he 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 went out and it was his own man. So, you know, it was definitely a challenge to bring him back into this band and and get those two back together, you know, because they are a great rhythm section and um you know, I really I really love both of their playing and they're they're both really cool guys, but there's so many logistics and things and old wounds and all kinds of things that we yeah, need yeah. to, you know, take into consideration to, uh, to us, who we tour with and, and what we do. And, um, I'm hoping, you know, it, it's, it's, you, we've got to work out the, the finances and all that kind of stuff, you know, when we're new to the label as well. So, you know, they're not, they're not throwing zillions of dollars at us to, <laughs> to be, I, to be, I, I, you know, I don't think labels do that anymore. But hey, yeah. So you know, so it's very much we've we've got to work it out how we're going to navigate this this world of touring. But it's it's the front thing on our mind. Even though we've started a new record, we know we we've got to still <laughs> tour. We've yeah. got to play together. You know. So yarn has got a break coming up. Well, a time where Amorphous will be recording. So that is a really good time for us to go on tour. So last question. So, yes. When is the next record coming out? <laughs> um it feels uh, that, that's, that. that's ultimately up to RPM, but um I think the record will be finished next year. Okay. That's my like drums are done, all the songs are written. <laughs> I'm gonna start guitars in um in, 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 hopefully later in the year. Hopefully, Jan will come over to Australia and record vocals with me um, early next year. So we intend to have the album done next year, but we also intend to we've we've got extra songs that won't be on the record. So we intend to release a few standalone singles in between to keep ourselves in people's minds. So so we'll probably have nine songs or so on the record, and we'll have about four extra up our sleeves for bonus tracks and maybe a couple of singles. So we're not going to disappear um, out of the consciousness, unfortunately, for those that want to get rid of us, but, but we're, we're not disappearing. We're going to, we're going to have music coming out regularly. And uh, uh, hopefully, you know, within a couple of years, that album sees the light of day. Honestly, Skinwalker, the album is so good that I, I, it will be silliness from uh, the scene to let Eternal go uh, to be forgotten. Thank you. I appreciate it. Really, you know, I hope people take that time, like you said, to just sit down and sit with it. Um, I I really hope that um, the the metalhead that likes to take time to in, embed themselves in something, um, you know, do that. Don't you know? Don't sort of if you if you're a person that's going to listen to one minute and and sort of lose your attention, then we're probably not the band for you. But if you want to go on a journey, then come on a journey with us, hopefully. Yeah. And let's say to everyone who is who will be listening that let's pay attention to Australia. There are very good bands there. Yes. I think, you know, some people are now mistaking us as a Finnish band, but we, yeah. we need to remember that two of the songwriters are Australian as well. So, you know, um, it's a it's a unique cross-cultural collaboration. Yes. So yeah, Australian. Australian bands and Australian musicians have something to offer the world. And uh, clearly our lovely and quite successful rhythm section believe that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be stuck with these two Aussie guys. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much for your time, Mark. Uh, enjoy the rest My of your pleasure.
And hopefully, I don't know, we'll see the Eternal here in Chicago. Yes, I've been to Chicago before and I would love to come back. So perfect. Um, if we do, hopefully we see you there. Yeah, let's use our strange accents to talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank All you. Right, have a great night. Bye Thank bye. you very much. Bye bye. Cheers, buddy.